This kills lab rats. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Three Geeks Flicks. Joining me, as always, is the muse, Justin Kyle. Say hello, everyone, Justin. Hello, everyone. Ah, yes, and of course, I am the Tech Mitchell Wright. This is a geek feed for you all here today on June 27th of 2016. We're going to jump right into it. And, as I always do, I look to you, good muse, and say, Justin... Give it to me. Okay, so Warner Brothers invited a bunch of the uh, the movie critics as well as some movie news uh, reporters in right. the uh, in the movie space to London to do some interviews and look behind the scenes of the new upcoming filming Justice League. So <clears throat> they were. It, it seems like at this point they're doing kind of a quality control uh, for you know the the debacle of Batman v Superman that did not. Uh, get the uh, praise that they wanted financially or critically um, so right. we've already talked about our, our opinions on that at length but pretty much what they were confirming they were showing people now this has been unprecedented because it's not uncommon for a studio to invite reporters and journalists to behind the scenes but usually they won't be able to talk about it it will be uh What's the word that you can't talk about it until it's very hush hush and under the table, right? It's and they won't actually legitimately be able to talk about it until uh, a couple months before before the movie comes out, right? So uh, this is this is you know the fact that they were able to t- talk about what they were seeing behind the scenes, um, it, it, it's unprecedented in a way, especially for this kind of film and this this big budget, this uh, grand scale. Right. So they, they talked about the tone of the movie. They talked about individual uh, characters, the difference between the new direction as far as tone. Yes, they did shed some light on, on what they thought worked and did not work in Batman v Superman. Right. Um, they did admit that you know it was a little too uh, you know dark and dour at some point. Um, so they they said that this is completely different. It is a standalone film now. It, they're they're not doing. Justice League Part 1 and 2. This is going to be its own movie, kind of like right. The Avengers and Age of Ultron. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, they talked about the tone. They said this is going to be kind of a little more light, uh, a little more playful. Uh, they they showed some exclusive look at the uh, Ezra Miller's costume as a, as a Flash. Yep. There's like 170 pieces in order to make that yeah, costume. Yeah, 173 or something like that. Yeah. Something, something crazy. And I think we saw a glimpse of it in Batman v Superman. Uh, they 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 talked about some of the uh, Batman Bruce Wayne's tech. Yep. And apparently there's there's what they're calling the flying fox. That is essentially the Justice League's Quinjet to the Avengers. Right. So it's it's just like a, a plane for Justice League. It's so big it can actually carry the Batmobile in it. Uh, obviously there's a new upgrade to the Batmobile, and they also have something called the uh, oh, I forget what they called it, but it's like. Uh, this is essentially the Batmobile, but it has like uh, uh, like a uh, spider legs to it that it can walk up yeah. building. Yeah, you know what I mean. The bat crawler, the crawler, or something like night that. Crawler. Night crawler. It's called the night night crawler. Now that is as a concept. When I first heard of it, I immediately thought of the movie Wild Wild West. Remember those? Remember that movie? Now, that big, <laughs> yeah, that big thing. If they can pull it off. That would be super cool to see that, like walking up a, a skyscraper or something. Um, so yeah, they talked about they talked about the tone, they talked about the story elements, what they were going for. Um, I think this is the direction they needed to go because you know Warner Brothers, as as well as Man of Steel and especially Batman v Superman. You have to applaud them because they're swinging for the fences yeah. on everything. Now, they haven't made home runs every time, but at least they're getting up to the bat and swinging with all they got. So for the fact of them to come out now and say, you know, we, we made some errors probably in the first one. We admit to that. We're li- more, most importantly, we're listening to the fans. That's very admirable. You know, even Zack Snyder kind of made some comments comments about it. But, uh, but yeah. 
that's it. I, I personally, when I hear that, I think it's the best thing they could do at this point. I admire it. Um, I don't know. what. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's definitely damage control that they had to do. Um, the tone was very dark, but um, I, it, it's okay to lighten it up a little bit. I just hope that this uh, these movies do not have such a frenetic pace and that, that they're doing just a standalone Justice League instead of one and two. Hopefully that does not take, a la- uh, take away enough time to develop a story and not make it feel so rushed. Uh, right. So, you know, I, I, yeah, critics and, and film reviewers and, and whatnot going out and talking and everything, that's fine with. Sorry, I did not turn the sound off on this. That's okay. Unbelievable. Uh, a new low. Technical thing there. Uh, but... You know what I think about critics, and you know what I think about you know your mainstream review people and whatnot. They're bought and paid, as far as I'm concerned. They're bought and paid to say certain things one way, and they like real artsy fartsy films like Water for Elephants. So <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> but you know, but but in all honesty, it's just kind of I'm, I'm hopeful. I hope it goes the right direction. I, I hope that they truly did address the issues and the problems that they had. And uh, I, I want to see this film and uh, the DC films from here on succeed. So, I'm hopeful. S- still, st- you know, not necessarily skeptic- skeptical, but cautiously hopeful. Now, that is the perfect way to describe it. Is after this, they reinvigorated hope into the, the long-term goal. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's interesting that they do this, and they show they probably have, have given as much away with this Justice League film as they have with Wonder Woman and the Suicide Squad as far as the making behind the scenes of town mm-hmm. goes, which, I mean, let's, let's not kid ourselves. They needed to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, uh, moving on, uh, my story a uh, little we'll talk about here is um, there's been a lot of uh, a talk as far as the reshoots for uh, Star Wars Rogue One. Um, first about you know Disney saying that they were displeased and worried and it wasn't what they expected, and then later down the line was oh it's just to lighten the tone because it's going to lead right into Episode Four and they want it to match. And, uh, oh, you know, what role Vader's going to play and everything. Well, uh, finally the Disney execs, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, Gareth Edwards, and and, uh, the powers that be, uh, decided to sit down and and debunk a lot of these rumors and and let everybody know that, look, we always knew we were going to do reshoots. We didn't know we were going to do reshoots whenever we were sculpting the film to its final edition. Um... You know, people's schedules are a little hectic, which is understandable, and that's how it's going to be. You've got people moving on other projects, trying to bring them in, you know, catch other shoots and whatnot. They said they're not taking anything out of the movie that they hadn't already had in, other than they're doing additional shots and adding things in that they felt like needed to be added in, which I do not at all think is a bad thing. I think that is a wonderful thing to do into a movie to make sure you're telling the story the way it needs to be told. And another thing that I enjoyed that they saw is the tone is dark. It is dark like Empire Strikes Back, and that's the movie they intended to make. It is the war film that they intended to make, and it, it, it's not at all to lighten the tone or to uh, make it more uh, humorous or whimsical. It is the tone that it is set forth that they want it to be, and that's where they're standing on it. So I, I think it's awesome that they came in and they addressed all this. Um, I, I caught that, by the way. And uh, so ashamed. Another thing I, I kind of liked is, is, you know, Kennedy was talking about how Gareth, he, on this, he's doing a lot of handheld shots that you really don't get in some Star Wars movies, but that right. you'll get maybe in, like, war movies to where you're following infantry in or something like that, or you're trying to get a, a certain shot, or, you know, you got kind of like the shaky cam thing that, that just worked awesomely, like in, oh, say, Jason Bourne and whatnot. So, uh, obviously, it, it's on track. There's just some things that they wanted to add it to and hype. Um, they definitely like the darker, darker tone of the feel. It is definitely that war film that we want. No, they're not crapping in their cornflakes. They're, they're pleased with their product. Oh but my. also, th- they talked about, you know, everybody knows that Darth Vader is going to be in this, which is, you know, revoiced by James Earl Jones. But also to the fact that they are using him sparingly 
in the story, but at key moments he will loom enormously, which is an awesome little uh, little drop, little tidbit that makes me even more excited to see him in this film, to know he is not overly used, but when right. he needs to be there and when he's there, he is key, he is clutch, he is crucial, and uh, he owns the day. Right. So, as far as my feelings, that was mine. Muse? So, I've heard I've heard the story before that everyone's going crazy because of these reshoots. So, every big budget production especially something like star wars i'm not i'm not familiar with the budget uh of this particular one but it is to be expected that there are to be reshoots exactly uh, so i don't know i don't know what they did the same thing about suicide squad recently when they yeah. were doing reshoots. so you know i don't know it, it, it's i don't i know i trust disney and especially you know kathleen kennedy and all of them we have to also keep in mind that a lot of times in the past where there's a ton of smoke there's usually fire hence i'm talking about specifically fantastic four yeah so yeah yeah that is a that is on a whole nother level than what we've heard before because you're talking about josh trank some days you know showing up drunk or high if if at all what well, yeah that word yeah and well and the thing about fantastic four there aren't enough time there isn't enough time in the world for reshoots to fix that crap burger that they laid and that's it i now think the fantastic four so like it, not to not to go off on a tangent, but the Fantastic Four has has a lot of problems. Not just the you know the director, but uh, Gareth Edwards. He has a pretty solid track record. I like monsters, and I liked uh, the Godzilla, the 2014 Godzilla. I did like that. Right. There, it, it wasn't a perfect movie, but no. what it did good, it did real good. Absolutely. So you know, it's not like I'm worried. I, I have no doubt about his talent as a director. Um, you know, if 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 the studio was really so unhappy with this product, we would have heard this stuff a long time ago. You know what I mean? This wouldn't be coming out right now because you got dailies, you got editing, all that stuff. Oh yeah. So I don't see I don't see Disney risking that at this point with this kind of franchise. I mean, it's Star right. Wars, and again, when it comes to reshoots, it's to be expected. You know, it's it's part of the filmmaking. Like you said before, not only is it you know. Just to go back and retouch that, but they're also they're they're wanting to add to it. That's why they over budget for these things because they're planning on it. Yeah, yeah, and I think given recent box office uh, flops and whatnot with big budget movies, you know, fans and critics are probably a, a little chicken little right now that the sky is falling whenever they see all these crazy reshoots, and it's just like you know, hey, folks, this is business as usual. We let them do their job. Uh, I, the Star Wars universe, uh, I don't believe, given the scrutiny and everything that, that is in that set of films, that they're going to let anything that they feel terribly marred or flawed out the door. Well, I understand the concern, because if you look at the, even the past years, like we were talking about Fantastic Four, that they had, and the word I was looking for was embargo. Uh -huh. So they, they had an embargo on it until the day of its release. In other words, critics got to screen it like two or three weeks in advance, but they couldn't talk about it, they couldn't write about it until the day it came out. Now, if you compare that with Civil War, they had an embargo release a month before it came out. So they were wanting people to talk about it. That's the confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is The Force Unwakened, they didn't, they didn't open it to reviews. Uh, obviously, that's JJ there for you, but... That shows a lot of confidence in and of itself. Yeah, uh, and JJ talking, knew he had it. Talking about this, Batman v Superman. When the early reviews came out of Batman v Superman, I think it was about a week or two weeks in advance. the The majority, uh, the biggest word I kept hearing was mixed. That it was it wasn't what people expected, and it was right. let down. So, looking at the history, I understand why people are concerned about it. But as far as getting upset because a film having to do reshoots that's nonsensical that's every big budget movie plans on that stuff absolutely uh you know there's and, and, and until we see i don't know you, not i wouldn't even say until we see the trailer because the trend the, the first couple trailers for fantastic four i thought were really good that teaser trailer for fantastic four was was very good you know so not even the trailers will give you whenever they i don't i don't know if they're planning on screening this but uh you know 
there are a couple of critics. I know how you feel about critics. There are a couple of critics that I trust because in the past we shared almost identical feelings with movies, right. certain movies. Right. So when I right. hear those, and obviously that's a that's a select group. Uh, but when I when I hear from them, that's when I'll start, you know, really, really either being sighing with relief or like gripping my my teeth. Right. Absolutely. And I couldn't have said it any better, and I'm not going to. So, as that is, is that all you have for me today, Good Muse? Well, I can't think of anything else that's related to these two stories, so I would say no at this time. Okay, okay. Thank you for eloquently wrapping that up. And uh, as I always do, I want to thank you all for tuning in and say, check us out on Facebook at 3 Geeks Flicks, just spelled out like it is, but with F L I X. Give us a like, give us a holler, leave us a comment. Keep it appropriate. It is Facebook. There are older people on there. Um, and then on Twitter, for all you young people that don't like very many characters, uh, we're on there. It's at the number three geeks flicks f l i x give us a follow comment let us know what you'd like to see if there's something you'd like to talk about maybe we could have you on a geek speak to where we yes we skype you in and talk with you we have you on the show it's recorded it's legit you know let us know because we'll put it on youtube and there's no going back after that that's right that's right but just just be warned yeah we will tattoo you into our video network forever unless we don't like you and then we'll delete the video <laughs> oh no he's not kidding folks <laughs> he, 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 he has the passwords he knows how to get on he could make my life very difficult <laughs> all yep. right folks well again appreciate y'all sticking around and as i always say Stay tuned to the glow of those monitors, because we're going to catch you next time. Good night. Just one look. It was so hard. I in love. With you. What? Microsoft Edge, you suck. And I felt so hard, hard, hard in love with you. Uh. <laughs> oh. Did I do that? All right, hang on. I'm going to put you on hold for like five minutes. Oh, I'm going to slap you. All right. I'll let you go first. Oh, am I doing the introduction? No, I'm doing the okay. introduction. But you go first, as always. <sighs> Shut up. Right. Hello, Sorry. everyone, and... Damn you, son. Sorry. All right, ready? Little zip. Little zip. Little zip. Little something. Okay. No, a little something. Something. No, little something. Little nothing. I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> so I had the Mortal Kombat theme on my iPad. It was on a, like a first generation iPod. And I was playing it. I didn't mean to do this, but I actually I had it turned up all the way in the headphones. And it started blasting in the middle of English class. It starts with that big gong. <laughs> Mortal Kombat! <laughs> in the middle of English class, when we're talking about Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> my food's been waiting on me. So I could talk to you. Oh, thank you. You should. I did. And you damn well right. <laughs>